All right, this is lab five in the dog. So we are starting on the pelvic limb today. So you will have to make your incisions in the skin and skin out the hind limb. So again, you're starting on that midline by the umbilicus, going with a ventral incision along the ventral midline, and then you're going to do kind of the same incision that you did with the forelimb and go down the leg and then encircle the tarsus. So you're gonna go around that and then peel it all off as one big flap. So you're going to be very careful around the genitalia and skin that out just very carefully uh, as close as you can. And then also if you see right here, that I've taken the rest of cutaneous trunchi off with the skin. So we don't need that on this part. You can just take it off with the skin. So once you do that, you'll have a lot of fascia and fat. Um, this is kind of what it will look like over everything. <laughs> but you're going to take all that off. Look for the muscles underneath. And you'll be looking, so up here we have the deep gluteal fascia, superficial gluteal fascia that's covering the rump area, basically, of the gluteals. Uh, so that fascia is on your list of terms that you should know. But you should also know the fascia lata, which is also on your terms. So that's right here, where you have some of the muscles attaching we're going to go over. And then the thoracolumbar fascia we'll look at in a minute, but we did see that before. It's back here. All right, so we will start on the muscles. So you're going to outline your biceps femoris, which is this muscle here, the biggest muscle on the lateral side. You wanna outline the borders and just see where those are. So take off that fat and fascia. And then you're also going to have this tiny little muscle kind of along the caudal edge. That's the caudal curl abductor muscle. It's very small, easily ripped, and you can just take it with biceps when you transect it and that's just fine. So you'll reflect biceps after making a cut right across here by the origin, and then reflect the main muscle mass distally down, but don't cut the fascia lata. So you don't wanna cut this part. This is what's gonna keep it attached to your limb. All right, so you're going to do that. Then we're looking at semitendinosus muscle here. So it's kind of an oblong shape going all the way down, semitendinosus. Then next you're going to have semimembranosus, which is a lot thicker and it kind of has two bellies that you'll see as you're dissecting this out, but you don't have to differentiate them or name them, but there are kind of two bellies to semimembranosus and it's much thicker and fleshier than this semitendinosus here. So again, biceps femoris, reflect that, semitendinosus, isolate that, semimembranosus here. Okay, then we'll go to the medial side and see a few of the muscles over here. I have to put some of this back together here. So here you have sartorius, which is this muscle. It kind of looks like two straps running distally on the leg. And in the dog, you do have this cranial and caudal part that's very distinct with the line in between. So cranial part, caudal part, um, but it, the whole thing is sartorius. And you're actually going to define that and then cut across both parts at the same time, at the same level, and then just reflect it distally on the limb. So that's sartorius. Over here we have gracilis. It's kind of a flat muscle. Once you cut it, you'll see, but this is kind of flat and it lays over top of your adductor muscle and your pectineus muscle, which we'll find next. So you're going to cut the symphyseal tendon which you can see right here where the probe is. Oops. This fascia right here is connected to the midline by a symphyseal tendon. So you actually want to go all the way up to that midline and cut through the aponeurosis, the symphyseal tendon here, to reflect gracilis distally. So when you reflect that down, under that you will see your adductor muscle, which is the really big piece here. And then pectineus, which has been cut, but it's kind of a little spindle shape right in front of or cranial to the adductor muscle. So that's right there. And then just cranial to your pectineus muscle is your femoral triangle. So you'll see your vessels, your femoral vessels coming out. And that's your femoral triangle. So femoral triangle, pectineus here has been cut. You will also do that. Um, and pectineus tends to rip, so you may want to cut that sooner than later. And then adductor muscle is the big one that has a two parts, but you don't need to necessarily differentiate them here in the dog. 
but you are going to have to cut through the adductor muscle, so you go pretty close to midline, and you're going to make a deep cut across that whole muscle belly. And you're going to try and be very careful and preserve your external obturator, which is underneath here. So as you're cutting, just kind of peel it away with either a scalpel handle or your fingers, and just cut and peel until you get down to that external obturator. So adductor muscle, here you have that semimembranosis again that we saw before. All right, and then we will go a little bit more cranial, and then we will come on the dorsal aspect. So here you have that sartorius that's been cut, and then you have the tensor fascia lata. So tensor fascia lata, you kind of have to reflect that sartorius, and it's a little bit of a pyramid or triangular shape here is the muscle belly, and it's attaching to that fascia lata going down to the knee. So tensor fascia lata, and that also has a cranial and caudal part, but you don't need to differentiate those. And you'll cut straight across that, leave a little stump so you can identify it, and then reflect that down. But again, try not to cut that fascia lata. So you're going to have this big mass that's just kind of reflected down like that. All right, then if you want to maybe come on the dorsal aspect just a little bit, we'll look at the gluteal muscles. So here you have your transected biceps femoris. And if you lift that up, let's see if that'll stay. Okay. Then we're looking at the gluteals. So you have a superficial gluteal, which is kind of flat and thin and has this aponeurosis right here. So you kind of want to just separate it out. I usually go on the cranial edge to start and then separate that off and cut the aponeurosis and just reflect that down. However, you do want to be really careful caudally because as you lift this up, you'll see that that sacrotuberous ligament is right there. So that's where biceps femoris here is. But you also have superficial gluteal stuck right to that. So be really careful so that you don't cut that. But here's that sacrotuberous ligament, the white line there. All right, so superficial gluteal reflects distally. Then we have middle gluteal. So middle gluteal is going to be the biggest part here, very large and fleshy. And you're going to transect middle gluteal and be very careful not to transect all the way through your deep gluteal underneath. So typically I go on the cranial aspect here and you can usually see the tendon of the deep gluteal right here. And so I just kind of use a probe and get between those two and then I start cutting that middle. So you're going to transect all the way across the middle and lift it up. So middle gluteal has an extra little part that's called the piriformis. Um, it's just this tiny little piece here and that will be, as a reflect, you may be able to separate that out. If you can't separate it, that's okay. But as you cut it, you can kind of lift up and see that little piriformis separate out. Okay, and then we have the deep gluteal, which is this fan shape right here. That's deep gluteal, and we are not transecting that one. We'll just leave that intact. Then there is a tiny little muscle that may be really difficult to see on the video, but we will give it a shot. So I'm going to put the probe right at the cranial edge of this muscle, and then my forceps are kind of right on top of it. But right here is the articularis coxae muscle, and it's just a tiny little thing right under the cranial edge of deep gluteal that you want to try and find. And the reason you want to find it is so you can put your finger on it and then move the limb. And you'll feel that that's a marker for the hip joint. You can feel the movement right underneath that. So it's just a little muscle, but good to know. So articularis coxae in that little hole there. All right, uh, one thing that we have to go back to is the popliteal lymph node, which I didn't mention. So as you're doing your biceps femoris, on that caudal edge, there's a bunch of fat and fascia right here. So you'll be between the biceps femoris and semitendinosus, and you'll have this popliteal lymph node, one or two, sometimes there's a couple. Here's a little tiny piece right here, and then this bigger one would be the main popliteal lymph node right there. So that's on that caudal aspect, and just try and preserve that if you can. It's kind of hidden in the fat there. And that should be it for lab five.